a good day, uh, fellow ISTAR members. Uh, this is Mr. Nelson Giaguiaoy, and I'll be discussing about the topic titled Doing Research Do During the Pandemic, Challenges and Opportunities. So when the pandemic came in the different parts of the world since 2019, researchers find it hard to concentrate because of the many challenges posed by the event. But there have been also opportunities wherein people from the academe, scientists, and other people who are doing research are being challenged to further the improvement of knowledge. So for the outline of my discussion, there would be eight topics. One is the meaning of research, purpose of research, characteristics of a good research, basic skills required for a researcher, hindrances in doing research, understanding research ethics, the pandemic challenge, and the pandemic benefit of doing research. As we go on with the first discussion, so mostly all of us are aware of the meaning of research as I go down with the meaning. According to Burns and Group in 2007, it is a diligent systematic inquiry or investigation to validate and refine existing knowledge and generate new knowledge. So as researchers, we are to endeavor to give or generate new knowledge. According to Sanchez in 2002, it is a discovery and exploration of the unknown, involves an investigation of facts, leading to the discovery of new ideas and new methods. So we are here as researchers to discover new ideas and new methods to solve a particular problem or to offer solutions to a phenomenon. And according to Miriam Webster, it's an investigation or experimentation Aim at the discovery and interpretation of facts, revision of accepted theories of laws in the light of new facts or practical application of such new or revised theories or laws. So as researchers, we are here to offer solutions to prove or disapprove a fact or a theory or law wherein based on experimentation, observation, and collection of data, we will be able to generate new knowledge to the existing or current knowledge that is being believed into. So for the purpose of research, uh, the first aim is to learn something or to gather evidence. So if you'd like to prove or disprove anything, we have to gather evidence wherein we could show facts and figures to disapprove a particular thing. It's also aimed to develop and evaluate alternative approaches and strategies. So as researchers, most especially in the academe, we are here to explore new knowledge and to evaluate existing if they are still effective, or we need to revise, reject, or to simply implement new strategies and approaches. It also needs to provide basis for decision-making. So researchers, we submit the results of our research to policymakers for decision making, most especially in the legislative aspect, if you would like to offer solutions to solve and offer problems. So nowadays, uh, one of the things that we need to really take care of, of is make the decision making for our legislators or policymakers to offer solutions to those problems. It's also as a personal endeavor to acquire a deeper understanding about a phenomenon and develop tools for assessing effectiveness of any practice. So there are researchers who are developing tools, assessment strategies, uh, using skills on how to measure, to validate the reliability of a particular practice or a particular existing phenomenon that is we have to implement or to improve. It provides a scientific basis for any practice or methodology. So research is based on scientific basis, gathering solutions, so a step-by-step -step process where we could offer solutions to problems, a practice or methodology. So as researchers, we should have a scientific mind or inquisitive, critical mind to understand and to explain 
So there are people who have doubts, who have some fears, who have some anxious to accept certain truth, but we have to verify those things. The characteristics of a good research are, are as follows. No? It should be systematic. It follows an orderly and sequential procedure. So step-by-step -step process, you cannot jump into the last step without understanding first the first, second, third, or whatever step it will take for you to proceed to the next activity. It's empirical, capable of being verified or disproved by observation experiment. So there are uh, certain research that needs to be verified and disproved based on observation or experimentation. It should also be as much as possible objective. Uh, there's no prejudice, personal feelings, or interpretation. So as researchers, uh, one of the things is sometimes we go on with biases, cultural differences, so we would like to pay more. So it should also only deal with facts or conditions. No, no hidden facts, no way to distort the truth or to revise a particular fact. It is analytical in its critical analysis of data, controlled. Uh, there are things, controlled group, and controlled group in the data set up in a way that minimizes the effects of other factors affecting the relationship. And it should be ethical. It should conform to accepted standards of conduct. So there are, you have to verify, to give informed consent, to let your respondents fully understand what is the purpose of their participation uh, in the event that they try to stop the interview process or the experimentation. What are your ways in order to respect their rights based on their beliefs, creed, religion, or personal beliefs? What are the basic skills? There are so many skills required for every researcher, but there, these are just some of the few basic, no? uh, to go beyond that, that is case-to-face -case basis for every discipline. First of all, we have, you should have the ability to gather and to analyze data. So analyzing data requires a tedious process. It depends upon the statistics or tools that you will use, the number of respondents, what is your sampling technique, the ability to generate ideas for research projects. So as teachers, most especially in the academy, we are required to submit action research, different types of full research in which we could be able to access grants or present it to national and international conferences like this organized by our star and ability to develop rapport with the respondents. So there are certain respondents who will not be able to say yes automatically if you would not like them because there are certain things that needs to be considered. And sometimes your respondents doesn't want to really tell the fact when you are interviewing them because out of fear of being able to tell the truth, then their bosses or the administration or people that might be affected by the things that you will say. Ability to identify sources. So there are primary and secondary sources and other sources in which you could get those appropriate literature. That's why in full research, we are required to submit the RLL or review of related leads or literature, the studies that will support the gaps within your studies. And ability to write well, organize ideas, and communicate clearly. So one of the pitfalls of researchers is how to, you have already gathered the data and how to organize them. Because as you are going to submit and write the results of your research, people are going to read them. And if they don't want to fully understand, they just read the, the abstract. So you should be able to clearly specify who are the respondents, what is the sampling technique use, what is your conclusion, the recommendation, as simple as that, because some people does not read, except for some researchers, so really good at understanding, most especially in the statistical aspect of your research. What are the hindrances of doing research? Generally, it's the authority. Uh, you have to go through with many channels before you, people in the authority would approve your study uh, there are certain biases in which they would not allow you to get the data from their particular organization because of personal and professional reasons. Inaccurate observations, so most especially during this pandemic, you have to get so many 
So if you would like to get so many respondents, example, you would like to get the teaching strategies of a school district where in there would be around 20 to 30 schools. So because of the inavailability of the people, technological access problems, internet connection problems, you might not be able to really gather the reality on the ground. Made up information. So there are certain people who concoct ideas, concoction of ideas in which it is really not true, but they just would like to really let you know that the information that you made up favors a particular organization. And sometimes teaching load do matters, no? especially uh, if you are handling so many classes and you're required to produce a research, uh, teachers really find it hard to, to have a, to find time to do research because they feel tired, they feel stressed, and they have to go to places during the face-to-face -face or during this time of the pandemic. So they find it hard to balance the teaching load and doing research, especially from pressures from their bosses or peers that they have to present this particular type of research. Time and schedule, most especially, uh, there would be conflict in time of your respondents that they do not want to have this schedule because of so many paperwork or conflict of schedule, lack of knowledge on statistics. Uh, I personally, when I'm doing my dissertation, I ask the help of a statistician to assist me, especially when you're talking about the significant difference and the different things in which control group, the experimental group. Uh, there are so many uh, scientific ways to prove or disprove a certain phenomena. So you, we should be able to ask the knowledge of a statistician or someone who is knowledgeable in those numbers in order for you to really present the actual thing that is happening on your area or vicinity. Personal biases, again, uh, biases, we should not be prejudiced to the, to the belief of others and ethical considerations. So for the ethical ethics, research ethics, ethics is defined as a moral principle that governs a person's behavior. It is your way of conducting every society as its norms. And as a researcher, uh, we should be able to know our exposure to potential harms and risks that might arise, arise from your research. Are there minors involved? Uh, are you going to introduce a, a drug or any medicine or any vaccine to your group? And research ethics provides guidelines for responsible conduct. So it's most especially now there's an ethics research board or ethics review committee in schools and, and in different institutions for people to be educated that it's not just simple that you just simply give questionnaires and let people answer your your questionnaire or you simply conduct an interview. So you have to follow the protocol in order to really be respectful, most especially to the people that will be part of your research. So for the ethical theory of Murphy and Dingwall in 2011 includes mal non maleficence to so avoid harming of participants. Beneficence research should produce positive results. If the negative results do happen, so it should be able to give solutions to problems. Autonomy and self-determination, respondents' values and decisions should be respected. So in the event that you have to, that the respondents suddenly say no, so what will you do? So they should be able to say yes or no, or if they would like to continue. Most of the time, uh, as there, there should be coding to the names. So you, you, as much as possible, you do not include the actual names of the respondents. You, you may use codes or you may use letters or you may use any coding system that really would really protect them from, from their things that they have to say or that they have to answer. Since your result, uh, as much as possible, it should always be confidential. So you simply discuss it to the people who's sponsoring your research or in the academe, the, the panel will be the only one to see the actual names of those uh, respondents as a protection, as an additional protection, most especially nowadays people are very keen when it comes to 
confidentiality, and as much as possible, your research should not be copied from other research. You, you could replicate the research of others but as much as possible, uh, ask permission from the original authors. And justice, all people should be treated equally. So again, uh, choosing your respondents takes a lot of courage and takes a lot of ability to understand their differences. So most especially if you're doing an immersion activity, just like in a particular group or a particular society. So those ethnographic studies that requires you have to stay there, you have to live with them for around three, three months to a year or how many years or what you call longitudinal studies that you have to really, uh, that will really take most of your time and finances to really uh, produce such type of research. What is ethics in research and why is it important? No? In Resnick in 2020, uh, norms promote the aims of research such as knowledge, truth, and avoidance of error. So knowledge, truth, and as much as possible, we try to avoid errors in your research because it would entail uh, revisions. So many, so many researchers has, has come up with such error that cost with them so much. No? Ethical standards promote the values that are essential to collaborative work. So if we are a group of researchers or scientists that are trying to prove or disprove something, so you should be able to trust, everybody is accountable, mutual respect, and fairness. Many of the ethical norms help to ensure that researchers can be held accountable to the public, most especially if that is opinion surveys or uh, policy analysis of a particular program of a government wherein people are, or the public are directly affected by your results and decisions. Because nowadays numbers could be, could be validated, most especially in the pandemic, now people are are still wondering if the COVID-19 virus was a really a natural disaster as a pandemic or it is a man-made disaster concocted by, by scientists inside the laboratory to, to affect the economy of different countries no? and to make that particular country favorable to them, the economic aspect. So people sometimes are very hard to convince that they really have to wear face masks or face shield during the early days of the pandemic because people are always doubting the results of the numbers. Ethical norms and research also help to build public support for research. So if your research, people, there are people who are willing to support your research. So in schools nowadays, there are, there are, there are uh, educational funds that push teachers to do research. Even in the international societies, there are certain uh, awards that would be given and to be able to present in international conferences like ISTAR. It's an additional bonus and it's additional uh, bragging rights to people to fully understand the meaning of research. No? Many of the norms of research promote a variety of other important moral and social values such as social responsibility, human rights, animal welfare, most especially there are parts of the world who are still treating animals uh, inhumanely. No? As, as human rights and animal welfare, compliance with the law and public health and safety, most especially during this pandemic, there are so many research that come up now, how to minimize the effects of the virus, how to, to improve lockdowns, and is, is it proper to call it social distancing or physical distancing? Because when you talk about social distancing, you are isolating yourself from society compared to physical distancing where when in you're simply making your distance, not social distancing. Issues arising from research ethics. There are some issues, no? first is plagiarism, acknowledge source of information. So there are people who simply, that's why I, I do favor uh, the use of one, one program called Turn It In. So how many percent of your na sources have been quoted or they're simply, it's not just a simple uh, getting of resources from different sources. So you should acknowledge as a sign of respect to those people. Informed consent, respondents has the power of choice. So what will you do in case the respondents stop answering your, your questions or if they do not want to continue with the study, what will be your integrity of the researcher again? As a researcher, we are acknowledged by society 
as producers and generators of knowledge. So we should act professionally. We should know the ethics, the proper way, the protocol of conducting research. Deception or misrepresentation. No temptation should affect the results of your search, whether financial or pressures. So research uh, entails financial uh, things. And there are pressure groups that would let you ask to, this should be the result of this, this research. So do not go with the pressure of those things. Privacy, confidentiality, and anonymity. Again, uh, safeguard the intrusion of others into the lives of the respondents and against disclosure of participants. So again, as I said a while ago, uh, the confidentiality, privacy, and anonymity should only be known by your uh, panel and the people who are sponsoring your research. As much as possible, again, use your coding. We're doing re my research since uh, it's all about disasters in schools in a particular city in the national capital region, the Philippines, I use coding. So I use different types of natural disasters. So school school A will be called school typhoon, school B will be called school earthquake, school fire, or school, school tsunami. So those are the coding. So I interview school leaders. So school leaders such as in typhoon, so school storm, uh, school leader storm, school, school leader uh, blaze, school leader uh, it's the name of my respondents. So you should take care of the lives of your respondents. It is your responsibility as a researcher. So for the pandemic challenge, as we all understand, when the pandemic came, uh, there are so many researchers that has been affected by this phenomenon. And people are really trying hard to produce research. So first problem is the level of knowledge and access to technology, including those without access. So as a, as a personal experience, I have to give Google Forms to my respondents. So I have around almost 200 plus student respondents. So some came from the public school system. So they are experiencing, so I was able to get a total of uh, almost 200 plus student respondents and around 20 plus student uh, school leaders. So it took me almost two months to gather all the data because first of all, there are students who do, do not have internet connection or proper internet connection or those who could not really understand what how to answer in Google Forms because some schools are using other learning management system or simply doing module modular. So I have to get the assistance or to ask assistance from those people who really know how to explain and to how to answer. So as a step-by-step -step process, I asked the, first in the Philippines, you have to ask the assistance from the school's division office. So I have to write a letter so I could not go personally because of the pandemic. So I, I accessed the application form. So as I print it out and go with the respective school leaders, I have to maintain physical distance distancing, I have to use disinfectant, so I have to ask them to assist me. So their first problem is uh, most of our students doesn't have internet connection and we, some of us doesn't know how to use Google Forms. So I have to explain the proper way. So I have to fully explain on how they would be able to collect and to tell them this would, I, I have to show them, if you were to answer, this would be the, the results. So they were some, there were some uh, teachers who were amazed by the results. So as I do my pilot testing and they were able to see that this uh, participants in the pilot testing will not be anymore be part of the study. So they assist me. Reaching and choosing participants requires a level of access technology. So teachers uh, could not really provide themselves. Some does not have laptops. Some do have laptops, but the problem is they have downloaded so much application that their laptop some, sometimes experience slow slow internet connection or no internet connection or intermittent network connection, just like what I'm doing now. I am recording my, my talk in front of all of you because I don't know. Uh, I could not personally attend because I have to attend to a personal need to my family, but I hope that you will be able to continually listen to what I'm discussing in front of you. So this, this particular type of pandemic is really a challenge on how to conduct this particular 
research because you should have a certain degree of knowledge of because and not everybody doesn't know how to use uh, Google Forms. Not everybody doesn't know how to use polls and opinions. So you have to really guide your respondents to and how to answer. So after two week, two months, I was able to gather all the the results. So I have to process them, and I really think the people who in private school there are some IT coordinators. So the information technology coordinators were really able. You would really see the disparity between the public and private school system in the country. The private school system has their respective IT coordinator. Although in the public school they also have what they call the IT coordinator, but sometimes uh, the lack of access to technology and the lack of continuous internet connection hinders them to fully utilize the internet connection in our country, in the Philippines. Another problem is following the health protocols. So in the early days, we have to wear face masks until now. The face shield has been a very controversial thing in our country. Physical distancing, the washing of hands, sanitizing and disinfectants. So it's very inconvenient sometimes. Uh, I have to, uh, quite a time, I have to personally go to the schools and ask the progress of the gathering of data since uh, every day as I check the, the respondents. So the first three weeks is very, very slow. So if a particular school has around 50 to 60 plus respondents, uh, around one, two, three, or five only answered, then I have to follow up, then I have to wear my face mask, my face shield, I have to maintain a certain degree of distance, at least one meter to, to the people that I have to talk to. And every time I go home, I have to, 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 to take a bath because I have, I have I've gone from a province in, in Bulacan to Metro Manila. And number four is the worries of catching the virus. So in, in around how many times that I have to go, I always worry. I, although I do have the vaccine already, I also have my booster shot. The mental challenges, most especially the how, how long will you able to finish the research, the respondents. You will be having finding respondents, the sampling methods, the access to reading materials, most especially our library and our school have to close. And I, I could not find how to really, what is the format of doing the dissertation on my doctorate degree and connecting with expert. Thank you. Thank you very much. This platform that we'll be able to discuss and meeting with advisors. So I always have scheduled my that my advisor would send this Google or Zoom link in which we could be able, she would be able to give me updates on Nelson. Uh, how's your study? Uh, how is your schedule? So when you when you are doing research, you you submitted a Gantt chart a schedule. So I have to follow strictly. That is my that was my prayer that I have to follow strictly the schedule. But unfortunately, I was not able to really follow to stick the schedule because of. Uh, there are certain respondents who would say, I'm so busy, I could not have the online interview. So with the online interview, I use Google Meets. So the interview lasted for around 30 to 45 minutes. There are certain uh, time of the interview wherein I, I find it hard to really listen to the answers of my respondents, school leaders, because the connection is not good. So I have to repeat it all over again. That's the problem of this uh, online. So I, when I have to schedule them, they would simply say, sir, I could not make it today. Uh, could we reschedule it tomorrow because there's an online meeting or since it's my school leaders or principals, assistant principals, coordinators. So I really have to adjust with their schedule. And out of 20 plus school leaders, I have to interview around 15 because uh, because of personal reason. They, 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 they say that they could not really have time to, to see. So I always explain to them everything. Then I have to, to repeat and to translate uh, the transcript in, for them to really uh, understand the reason of my research. Another is obtaining informed consent using remote technologies can be problematic when you are able to obtain. So when my research was done, I have to go to the houses of my panel members to personally ask for their physical signature. So I have to travel around, including some of the school leaders. I have to travel to get their physical signatures that they are allowing me because that's the protocol. The school leaders or the principal would not allow you to conduct the research to the coordinators and their students unless they sign it. 
But in the public school system, you they should be able to see that the school's division office superintendent signed the letter. In the case of private school, uh, the university president or the school owner should be able to see a letter from the school's division office or the ethics review board that you, you are really there to conduct the research. So that's traveling is very hard and I find it difficult to really obtain their signatures. Although the e-signature, the electronic signatures, okay, I have to really ask their permission if they would be able to trust me to get their physical or electronic signature. Many have seen months or even years of work disrupted or destroyed by the rapid closure of laboratories. Others have field work canceled and face-to-face -face training opportunities. So there are so many researchers, most especially in the archaeological or stolical uh, sites that you have to dig and to do so those research. So they have to be closed temporarily and face-to-face -face training opportunities. Although the face-to-face -face training has been canceled, there have been virtual trainings. But it's really hard to really and fully understand your research when you could not really handle a particular artifact if you are into historical research or those uh, doing ethnographic research because of the, the issue of physical distancing. You could not personally go there because there have been provinces who have been very uh, not allowing you to really go inside their particular areas because of the pandemic. Another problem is those with children and other caring responsibilities are struggling with the reality that they cannot work while peers around them are seem to be getting ahead. So if you are a father or a mother doing research, so there are your children, you have to do your research from home and your children are doing their online classes. So you could not really concentrate and you feel that you are being left behind. And whenever you see in social media that your peers are doing well compared to what you are doing. So you tend to compare yourself and you feel like why I am still stuck in here, I'm not getting ahead compared to them. So there's, there's the comparison. Uh, webinars offered an effective alternative to face-to-face -face interaction that led to Zoom fatigue. So during those times, there are one of the outlet of teachers is to attend Zoom, but then eventually Zoom fatigue happens. Additionally, anxiety around digitally engaging with large amounts of information in people made us more selective when we turn to our attention. People are trying it, trying really hard to attend Zoom meetings, but they could not sometimes open their camera because they feel shy or they do not want to be feeling like a blogger within, within there, including as teachers, no, as researchers, we, we have to have our online classes and it seems sometimes students are not answering. They're only part in their in their classes. Goodbye, man, goodbye, sir. So it's, it's funny that whenever you simply see tiles and tiles of students who are not who are not talking and you are the one talking. It's nearly not really interactive in the sort of that. So most individuals in academia have transitioned to working from home. For many, however, there are additional challenges in maintaining a research program without the clear-cut boundaries between work and home. Many academics face the increased stressors of balancing home and work-related demands simultaneously. So that's the problem with this pandemic. People, researchers really find it hard to maintain a clear cut boundaries between work from home because your home had been your workplace. So you have to have a simple area in which you have to divide your time between caring for your kids and doing your research. And it's some people really find it hard to continue. The pandemic benefit. First of all, it gives us a greater benefit to scholarly works and colleagues that are being equipped skills to write and present. So journals have boom. There's so many research that have been inspired by the pandemic and the pandemic sees a rise in research when it comes to what are the effects of the pandemic. As teachers, the pandemic has made our schedule more flexible than ever now because you are work from home, you could base your schedule on your time. Now that we almost all work from home, we can better organize our day schedule around all other activities. You could just like this, no? Uh, you could be attending this I-STAR conference, but you're also attending to a meeting or attending a conference. So you could have three laptops there in front of you, another is a cell phone. So you could be doing many things at one time, as long as your internet could carry the capacity of your connection. We also have 
more virtual collaboration and networking among researchers, uh, just like ISTAR. Uh, ISTAR uh, really boom a lot during the pandemic. So many have been members, and uh, we could always assure you that ISTAR is here, most especially this topic, no? sustainable development. And there's so many applicants for, for the membership, and we could be collaborating just like here. I'm in the Philippines, but we are uh, being heard around the world. So from as far as the United States of America, Mexico, uh, parts of Europe and the ASEAN and the Asian continent, Africa. So I was also able to develop friendship with some of the members of ISTAR because of collaboration between researchers in which this is really the aim of ISTAR, not to promote because just like one of our uh, members say, we are just one family, one world. We are probably different races, different creed, but in the end of the world, in the, in, the, in the end of the day, we are just simply brothers and sisters in research. So doing research has a positive impact on teaching because it was able to address the issues that could eventually benefit our students, such as the issues of online teaching, digital technology, and the blended learning, among others. So there are so many assessment on how to further the online teaching. So People are now watching videos, although there are some schools who have been able to really utilize online teaching, but because of the pandemic, more teachers are now utilizing these strategies, the remote teaching technology, the blended learning technology, and application of technology in different ways on how to excite our students. The professional benefits building community with peers, faculty, and organization on and off the campus. So most of us has in work, work from home schedule, but we are also presenting research output. Congratulations in advance for those who will be presenting or doing teaching demonstration and the ability to work independently as a critical thinker. So that's one of the abilities that will be developed if you are a researcher. And opportunities to learn about teaching in a blended, flexible format to use quizzes, polls, Padlet, Mentimeters, and more online tools for active learning exercises, especially now gamification is an in thing in teaching. And there's so many applications that you could download that you could learn from YouTube and any other social media to fully understand it. So that, that's a good research also though, is gamification or applications like this really tends to excite our students or to make them active learning, active, active learners. And Another is a breakthrough in the field of medicine, the discovery of the vaccines, possible interventions, actions, recommendations to alleviate the effects of the pandemic. So they say if the pandemic came every 100 or 200 years. So if we were to experience another the pandemic, we are sort of lucky because we will be able to share our experiences. The two years of hard lockdown that we experienced, most especially in the early parts of the 2020 and 2021, uh, we will be able to really, I hope we will be able, we were able to learn from history that this pandemic has made us stronger than ever. Although it's it's really, really sad that there are some of our peers who have lost their jobs, who, whose research had been canceled or they feel left behind. We are here to support them, most especially that uh, now, nowadays, uh, there have been some improvements, I believe we do hope, that's a result of research. And legislative measures were passed to lessen digital inequality for internet connections to enhance access to technology. In the Philippines, we have what we call the Department of Information and Communications Technology. It's really working hard to connect the entire country, who we have been one of the slowest internet connection in the world, but hopefully after this pandemic, we'll be able to learn and to relearn what are the lessons that needs to be improved towards the, the passing of those uh, measures, legislative measures, because policymakers always remember, uh, rely on research. Even them are doing research to make this uh, re a reality to every one of us. So uh, there are so many types of research in which we could delve into, uh, the quantitative and the qualitative, and as a researcher, it's one way to boost your career. It's one way to challenge yourself to do more. It's one way to 
generate new knowledge for our for the improvement of our society in general. And uh, general research includes identification. This is a scientific way to do research now, identifying a research problem, reviewing the literature, specifying your purpose, choosing research design, selecting participants and collecting data, analyzing data and reporting results, and eventually you draw a conclusion and disseminate the evaluating research to those people who you think would benefit from your research. So every research uh, should be backed up with solid evidences and very good discussions. So a statistician and an editor could help you. It is you that will be able to really know the ins and outs of your research. So I hope everybody always continue to do research. And research is always fun. Although it's a tedious process, but upon completing a research, it's, it's one way to improve our profession. So these are my references. I hope everybody learned again. Uh, I hope you learned something from my discussion. Again, this is Mr. Nelson G. Uh, to those who are Catholics and Christians, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Season's greeting to everyone and God bless every one of us. Thank you very much again to our president, Dr. Romel Tabula and the organizers of this research. May we have all a wonderful and a happy 2022. Goodbye and thank you.